Big Ford, runway 36, the Pioneer launch already. Big Ford, cleared for takeoff, right turn up. A lot of people worked really hard to make up for the fact that Air Venture was canceled. It looked amazing. I just yeah. wish that I wasn't so stressed out that I could have enjoyed it more. <sighs> Let's just go do a circuit and we'll listen and if it's good, we're good. So of course I haven't done any lists. Like you should start this video inbound to Green Lake. Right? I am going to, but I'm not. Okay. I mean, you make a good point. My head isn't in the game right now. I'm totally stressed out. Okay, that volume is fairly good for radio. How's that for you? 150, switch over monitor coming out. 118.5, have a super awesome day. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Oh man! Ultimately, I think I'm gonna just lean on what I shot with Jason, despite the fact that it did not go well. Fundamentally, right. I think it takes away a lot of learning moments and it's kind of a classic flight chops, borderline embarrassing, self-deprecating mess. SimVenture was the perfect application of my new G1000 panel setup. Everyone in mass ripping, I need a single file line up the tracks, half mile in trail at a minimum. Jason is flying the arrival with me because he's a CFI and I'm a G1000 newbie. And big thanks to Keith and everyone else that helped make this happen. Well, I was glad to be a part of it. I mean, July was a very stressful month for me. I don't want to make excuses, but it's an excuse. <laughs> Ironically, not going anywhere. I was so busy this year, and I guess I'm lucky that I'm one of the few creators that had original footage from AirVenture 2019 that I had not yet published. So I was able to make a fresh new AirVenture video, which I worked with EAA to line up for that week. So of course I was trying to finish that. I was doing live streams for them. I also did a major project with Garmin that had to also launch during the virtual AirVenture week, plus doing all that work, plus trying to set up the sim, which was new. So yeah, it was a lot, but I didn't want to not do this. So this was the first year that you guys did this SimVenture thing and obviously there were some bugs to work out but largely it was quite successful from what I could see. I set myself up for a little bit of a failure in terms of trying to put too many things on top of it and trying to coordinate with an instructor on the west coast who so had time zone issues and technical issues and racing to make it before the day ended. Good run, good run on that race Thank you very Can you much. put me on the panel while you adjust it? Everybody looking good screen. Good there you go, thanks. Okay, one, two, three, zero, five. Everybody half an hour on the trail. At the end of the day, you talk about the I'm safe checklist, and I mean, there's no question, right at the beginning, Jason is trying to get my head in the game, and I say to him, yeah, I'm totally stressed out, my head is not in the game, because I'm working out technical yeah. problems, and we gotta go. Like, we spent an yeah. hour together just getting going technically to capture, and I'm like, I know the event's about to end, so gotcha. I'm feeling this amazing time pressure, I'm absolutely failing the I'm safe checklist. In Fond du Lac traffic, it's Victor, India, Juliet, taking position runway 09 for a closed left circuit pattern. I'm having a hard time with my brake making that turn. Funnel out traffic, that's the 921 Victor November is off of Oshkosh for about the five miles to the north inbound runway 18 funnel out. So he's inbound 118, that's what he said? Is it yeah. up? Yeah, Tom. <laughs> that's me, <laughs> just warming up in the DA62, gonna do a pattern here. Tell him you're on, he knows you're on the roll. Power set, rolling runway 09 Fond du Lac. Okay, airspeed's alive and all that good stuff. Right off the bat, it was a little bit of a challenge because just simply trying to do a practice pattern, I was not really, I'm, I'm still, this setup is still very new for my sim. So I was, I had the stick on a drum throne, so it was loosely mounted. I didn't have a throttle yet and I really hadn't been flying the sim at all much. So I wanted to do one quick pattern, get my stick and rudder worked out. And even that didn't go smoothly because all kinds of traffic showed up. Immediately we had runway conflicts. Fondu Lac traffic, Cessna truck. Cessna going to 927 for departure, Fondu Lac. Well, which one is it? Two seven. Okay. <laughs> did you say that on the mic? No, I did not. She just traffic. said it. He's got All a right. white um, uh, at the north hangar. Down, and, uh, we lost on pilot edge. Just to say hi to Steve on frequency. Huge fan from Toronto. Cheers. Did someone just say something about Toronto? Yeah, they were talking to you, but tell me, uh, say again. Sorry, go again for uh, Toronto. We were just having a conversation here. Uh, we just logged on at the uh, north hangar. Just to say hi to you. Uh, welcome to Oshkosh, and uh, hope you have a good time. That's in the trip 2020. Yeah, thanks, man. We're just warming up here at Fond du Lac, where we head over. Fantastic. Are you right, right over the... Have a good flight. We'll catch you later. I'm now overhead the field. I'm just passing, okay. so I'm about to join left downward. Fond du Lac traffic. Good God, Cessna everyone's watching me. Runway People need to stop talking to you. I know. Fond du Lac. 
and just trying to get lined up. I was like going over here, no, we're gonna change it. No, okay, this one. And then Jason and I got disoriented a little bit. People were calling me on the radio, but it also kind of represented, I didn't realize it at the time, but I think it did set up that realistic feeling you get for Air Venture, which is there is a get there-itis aspect to this, no matter how hard people try to say there isn't. I mean, the bottom line is everybody's trying to go. I don't know, man, if we don't get off soon. These were flying away from the bad weather. If it was the other way around, I'd be nervous, but this is- <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Yeah, once we get off, we'll fly away from this. Almost always, there's incredible weather problems, right? Like there's almost always massive storms. Something. Of course, the camping is first come, first serve, right? So everybody's racing to get there, to get their camping spots. And at the end of the day, Oshkosh does have this challenge of get there itis and it really puts you in a spot where you don't want to not make it and you don't want to get put in the hold and run out of fuel and you've come from a long way and you're probably tired. People are probably gonna like beat me up a little bit in the comments for looking unprepared, but I think I accidentally simulated what really does happen. So let's talk about what happened and I'll let you kind of take the lead on debriefing that. So yeah, that, that stress you were feeling, that's not just a sim thing. You know, it does happen in the, in the real world too. And I've learned over the years to just not go when it's like that, like find another day to go. Because if you're gonna give yourself a really narrow window to get there, something is gonna thwart your plan and now you're really in a spot. So I try and give myself a much wider buffer and there's been many a time where I've arrived over the lake after a three hour en route and then had to hold for 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah, why don't you just chop it, drop it and try a landing if that's what we're doing here. Find a lot of traffic, you got a VA-62 on final 1.8 for touch and go. I did use a real aviation headset which had my four flight callouts in my ear for Bluetooth which really puts you in the spot where you get those callouts of entering the runway and, and how high you are AGL mm -hmm. and so on. So that really helps with the immersion, but there is something to be said for do your checklist for real, don't wear your pajamas, try to set yourself up for success. I'm too fast, eh? I can't see your speed. You know, I can't, it's not like being with you. So even with that, with, with the picture, you can't see the FaceTime calls, not, not good enough? No, that's just general, more like where your hands are going, MFD, right. CFD, okay. I mean. Well, I guess you can ask me to call it out, but. I thought you could see that, sorry. So yeah, as hard as we tried, I didn't have a good enough setup for Jason to clearly hear and see what was going on. Here's a sneak peek at our frustrated debrief after the failed arrival. How did I screw up my runway orientation, Jason? Two of us were here. No, I wasn't there, I wasn't there. Like my debrief on this is that I can't be a remote instructor in this, I had no visibility. I, I didn't know your speed, I can't see your position, I can't. <sighs> instrument training maybe like we should try again but i mean if i'm going to try remote instructing with you i think we should try instrument training maybe where i'm looking exclusively at the panel so that we don't have to toggle so several things will mitigate face palming next time i've now got the thrustmaster flying clamp for the side stick and the throttle and it won't show up in my pajamas which is something that jason is very passionate about in that you need to treat your sim flying like you're real flying hey steve i saw the rough cut and uh you know i want a mess right i think that because we didn't take the sim seriously up front, uh, we made a lot of decisions downstream that were a result of that. I think when you're using a simulator, you have to approach it exactly like a real airplane. Um, also, I think there's, you know, as much as I love Pilot Edge as a communications trainer, there's some serious limitations in the technology uh, when it comes to dual instruction. I mean, I couldn't turn my head and look and I couldn't hear the radios and I couldn't see the buttons. Um, if we can fix that stuff, I think then remote instruction it, it could be a really great thing. Pilot Edge has been doing remote training for a long time, so we're going to explore that to see how they do it and just how effective it really is. Okay, positive rate. Here's coming up. So let's talk about your arrival into Oshkosh. You flew the arrival itself fairly well, found the airport, found the visual references. You and Jason seem to be working as a team. And I'm just gonna give you a quick view of that to make sure flaps are up and gear is up. Okay. So the, the challenge is gonna be once I get to rip in to find the railway tracks. I'm disappointed there's no traffic, man. It started well, <laughs> uh, and then, <laughs> then it got interesting. Excellent job of that Skyhawk, excellent job. Got a I think red, you're too far to like the left. Red, white, and, but Skyhawk, right. half mile southwest of this. Yeah, you should be well, like... I think I see the, fit, the rip and water tower, feet, that's cool. Red and white Skyhawk, you see that? Turn, good. Go ahead and turn back to the left, turn back to the left, turn back to the left, turn back okay. to the left, red and white yep. Skyhawk. And there's the silos, I think, at 11 now. You see them? I think there's so. two Actually, parallel things. Yeah. One's a road and one's the tracks. Take the tracks on the left. Okay. And there's your silos. I got it. Nice. Nice. So now you're coming up the right spot there. Orange Skyhawk. Good job. Good job on the rock. Again, maintain 1,800 
still turning down. I just have zero traffic. Now, one one eight point five. Have a super awesome it's day. All right. Welcome to the show. Nice job, dude. You got the tracks. It's the one on the left. Yeah. I've got no traffic there. I've got no traffic there. Mm. All right. So, so I'm now eight miles away from Fisk. Perfect. And this thing is going to close in six minutes if they actually end it at well, two. Let's see what happens here. I think I just screwed up by being this late. No one else is here. Right. Okay, there's 1,894. Oh, my God. A guy just flew above me. Wow. He's going fast. That's the 2,300. He must be at 2,300, yeah. That's where you should have been, honestly. <laughs> and, whatever. of course, I got traffic up there. We, we're down here because we wanted the traffic. Three minutes till they close it if they really do it. All our crafting down to Oshkosh on a Fisk Road, if you can get the railroad tracks from this one to Three fish. miles away we'll from Fisk. We'll be down by Coloring Pipe within a mile and a half miles south of the Fisk. There's no way to sign it. Cherokee, it's over the East Coast Road, Monitor Tower 126.6. Welcome to the show. Have a super awesome day. Thank you. Thank you. And 90 knots, 1,900 feet. I'm coming up on Fisk. Legacy, excellent job. That was an excellent job. Go ahead and start your descent. Pull your speed back. You got a Cherokee just in front of you. A little over a mile in front of you for the Legacy. Go ahead and... Drop the descent down to about 1,800 feet. Pick up that east-west road. Monitor tower 126.6. Welcome to the show. Have a super awesome day. Same to you. Much appreciate. Hey, you're very welcome. I'm over Fisk. Red Diamond, half mile south of Fisk. Continue up the railroad tracks 1,800 for runway 27. Rock to acknowledge. That's you. Yep. Excellent rock. Excellent rock. So he had me going left up the railway tracks? Yep. All right. I thought I wasn't going to get it. Uh, there were a couple of uh, moments where it looked like you were trying to deal with radio work and Jason was not listening to the radio work as closely as you were. So he was speaking freely as though it was just you and him in a sim, uh, as opposed to you and him in a plane going to Oshkosh. New Skyhawk, just over Fisk, up the railroad tracks, 1,800 for runway 27. Rock oh, there they are. That actually looks going. like railway tracks. That's amazing. cool. That's awesome. You see them? I just have a passed them. You know, it's so hard. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Have a super awesome day and welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for talking to me. I missed it. Go again for the Red Diamond. 18.5. 18.5 for monitoring for the tower for runway 27. So that got my attention. I could see your body language change when you missed that first radio call right over Fisk. Okay. Hey, General, aircraft there coming up the railroad tracks from Fisk Avenue. Maintain 1,890 knots and directly over those railroad tracks. Make it sure you're in trail. Go over or unders, and uh, I'll pick you out once you get in, on downwind. Once you're on downwind, start that descent, and uh, I'll tell you what dot to land on. Blue Cessna, that's on base. Good job. Aim for that orange shot. Land on the green dot. I give myself a very low odds of hitting the dot. <laughs> Aim well in front of it. Yeah, well, do you want to look at the panel for any reason? Oh, uh, okay. sure. Here's the panel. I think I see the runway. You want to take that all in? Because I'm going to yeah. switch. Okay. Yep, I got it. So you're First going to go enter a right downwind for that runway. Rolled. You just crossed it. I got it. Yep. Now you're going to enter a right downwind outside those white buildings. Yeah, okay, so I should start slowing down more. Yep. 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 And this is your. Make sure you're over those railroad tracks. Make sure you're over those railroad tracks. Uh, you gotta turn just inside the gravel. Gears coming down. Right down like and the then there was one very concrete moment where it went from okay to confusion, which was my recollection is the controller said, "Turn your base now." And then about one second later, they said, "Turn the base at the orange dot." Aim for the orange, land on the green, something like that. Okay. We have a, a red diamond, a red twin diamond. Uh, turn your base now, start that descent. What is he talking about? And uh, I'm going to have you uh, turn your base at the orange dot, land on the green dot, the red <laughs> diamond, Whoa. the twin diamond. Okay. I'm confused because I feel like I'm mid runway here. Catch all aircraft. Yeah. Time now. One am I, am I crazy? Oshkosh, air I think this is the middle of the runway. Now close all aircraft monitoring. The common traffic. Yeah, keep going down, man. I don't know what you're talking about. That's, that's not even the middle of the runway. You have any, you're not even at the runway. Oh, that's too bad. You had already moved on, so you had turned the base now, and then from that point on, you weren't hearing much else, which is absolutely normal. It's happened to me several times where I've gone back and listened to a tape and realized, hang on, they actually amended the instruction a second later. So you heard turn the base now, which was not what you were expecting. So instantly there's confusion. So you got to turn base now. You, you kind of started turning base, then you corrected it and went back to flying the downwind. Yeah, you're really close right, on this. You got to slow. Looking good, looking good. The center that right downwind, I'll call your base, actually. I'll call your base. It's planned to land turn on left. green. Turn left. I got it. Road. Dot red and diamond. then you, you eventually did turn the base still relatively tight, but at an unfortunate spot because it visually lined you up with 2-3. <laughs>
uh, you guys didn't have visual on the dots. Watching the video back closely, as you were lined up on two, three, you will see the dots there. Oh, actually, I'm slow. You're gonna turn your base I got all my flaps out. The planet orange landing on the orange dot. And red diamond, you can start that base now. Start that base yeah, no now, kidding. and you can land on the green dot. Welcome to Oshkosh. Power out and aim and start landing now. And just aim way early. I'm confident with the low res stream that Jason had, he couldn't see the numbers of the X, but I should have seen it. It also would have helped if we had pre-briefed the airport layout. And uh, all aircraft will be closing in one right. zero minutes, ten minutes. Wow. Oh, okay. okay. Slow I'm, down. I'm, getting, I'm getting flame yeah, frame rate problems here. You start your base and land on the orange dot. I don't see the green dot. Do you see it? Turning fine all the way down nope. to the green dot. Once you get Keep going at power. Or uh, underneath uh, taxi speed. I don't Turn see the green right dot. The grass oh, no, I don't. Uh, I'm losing frame rate here. Parking. I guess there's a lot of stuff on the ground. I don't see a green dot. Is that those airplanes on the runway? I'm going through cones and shit. Like, where am I? I just landed in the show. Like, I, this is not right. <laughs> what the hell did I just do, dude? <laughs> You're going to crash. Brakes, brakes, I'm brakes. I'm on brakes, dude. Brakes. I'm on them. Oh, that's... And Red Diamond, uh, this landed on 2 3 knee system. Well, yeah, I guess I screwed that up. Well, Jason, we screwed it up. I just killed people. My sim setup isn't ideal for visual flying. I have the great big panel in front of me. That's primarily what I want it for, for instruments. So my monitor is very secondary in my setup. I don't have a good visual. I think I want to get track IR. So if I look around, I can actually get a better situational awareness going. So lots of right. things worked against the visual on that. But yeah, having Jason saying add power, cause I'm like, yeah, he's probably right. I guess the dots are going to appear. And then of course what appeared were cones in the end of a runway. <laughs> Right. The good news is you did find a camping spot. You actually ended up in a tent. Um, I think we have, a, we have a shot of that. So the camping ended up working out, just not, not where you would have thought. It is a lot of small things. And yes, the visual, it's important to have that ability to look around. And for sure, that is just a simism, because in the real world, you can absolutely just turn your head to the right and there's the runway. So if you're going to fly pattern work in a sim, you're going to need a way to be able to efficiently look around. Otherwise, you will be miserable. So I actually had a similar experience to you. The first time I flew in, I ended up having a, an incident trying to land on the orange dot. I also got turn base slightly early. Uh, my instruction was to turn base at the orange and land on the orange, which is fundamentally very difficult to do. Uh, and because of a prior distraction, we talk about distractions and get their itis. I didn't start my descent on time. I was still 1800 feet at the abeam the orange dot, so I'm 500 feet too high. So long story short, I, I got the turn around. It was very, t very tight. I was in a 2000 foot per minute descent couldn't arrest the descent properly, landed on the runway on the dot, but really, really hard, enough that I probably would have uh, collapsed the gear. And at no point did it occur to me to go around. And I was really actually very upset with myself after that landing. And there's a good number of people watching it. I streamed it live. I think we're all kind of stunned, like, holy cow, that was that was going well up until like the last 15 seconds. And all of a sudden, I'm in this, you know, 2000 foot per minute, 45 degree bank. How on earth did this happen? Why didn't I go around? And that happens in the real world. I mean, isn't that almost every year the, the runway gets closed at some point because somebody collapses their gear? It's like, that's what happens almost every year at Adventure. Pretty much, yes. That's one of the reasons that I had to hold at that lake that one time was because of a Mooney that collapsed its gear on runway 27. Absolutely. Because it's not something they would do at home. They wouldn't fly a tight pattern like that. They wouldn't force it down. Which, which brings to the good point that practicing for air venture should involve doing really tight pattern work and working on that. I think that my lesson from this is to not be so afraid to go around, really brief ahead of time, like, hey, this is a thing that can happen at air venture. Be prepared to go around. And a few people did go around. Either ATC initiated it or they called it themselves. And it's it's no big deal. Now, in your case, you had some extra pressure because you, you thought the event was going to close on you. Really, the reality is go around is always an option. And I'm working against something in my primacy, which is that I started as a glider pilot. So I've had many instructors <laughs> over the years tell me, why did you try to save that approach? And it's like, well, because my primacy is I don't get more than one try. You can't just make a thermal appear out of nowhere. Yeah. So, in, you know, the go around is, was not a primacy tool in my toolbox. So it's always been something I've had to remind myself like this is available. So let's just remember that, you know, and then going forward, I guess, to set people up for less chance of failure. Did you say, so there was there an ATC debrief you want to talk about? Absolutely. There are plenty of instances during the show where they would issue an instruction and then really and clarify it as part of the same sentence 
What really sold you down the river here was that the clarification came a full one second after, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is a lot in the cockpit. Your brain had already kind of moved on. Well, more importantly, we, we were like having a conversation. We were like, what, what's he talking about? Am I? Exactly. And I even asked Jason, like, am I crazy? I, th- I feel like I'm mid runway and we're talking over it. So we're missing the rest of it. Cause at that point we felt like we got our clearance, we got to react. Right. Now, this was also the first time we ran the event, as you as you pointed out. So in, to be clear, in the real world, there are actually four controllers who handle the role that our controller was, was serving. And it was a real Natka pink shirt. So these, these controllers know what they're doing, but they are somewhat handicapped in that it was only one controller instead of four. So this is the Fisk trailer where these controllers are just standing here with binoculars, giving instructions to airplanes. You don't respond back to them, basically. You just rock your wings and you do what they tell you to do. And they got one after the other. It's really cool to watch them do it. Low wing quarter mile south of Fisk, rock your wings. Nice rock. wing rock, low wing quarter mile south of Fisk. I want you to make a right turn eastbound, right turn eastbound, start the turn now. What you'd have is someone looking at the downwind for planes coming, but then there's always someone monitoring the final. So in this case, the controller hadn't really noticed right away that you were lined up for 2-3. And the second part is, because we're not actually controlling visually, we're using a radar scope in this case, it's tough to tell that you were lined up on 2-3 until it was virtually too late. I've never seen 2-3. I didn't even know 2-3 existed in, in, uh, at Osh. It's just not a thing. Once I lined up, I, I think I did what you did. I made sure gears down, da, 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 I look up and I'm lined up with a runway. So I'm just continuing. It's like there's not even any thought that that's the wrong runway. So next time around, we are planning on allowing the tower controllers to have uh, more teams of people, as well as a tower visual, which would let them see things unfold in real time, including the altitudes. So you would be simulating the guy with binoculars, basically. Exactly, yes. Yeah. And lastly, we, as a result of what happened with you specifically, we <laughs> they actually started trying not to issue those base turns uh, uh, quite so early to allow for the possibility that people might accidentally line up on 2-3. So they, so they said, you know, that was like the perfect storm. Uh, radar scope instead of a tower, one controller instead of four, early turn. The delay between the turn instruction and actually the clarification, hey, don't turn just yet. What I really meant was turn at the orange dot as opposed to coming up on midfield down. End. So all of those things came into play. Uh, poor guy. I think I could have happened to anyone. It, it would probably in the same. Outcome. I, I got to admit, like at the time I was frustrated and pissed, right? I felt like I put a lot of effort into this. I looked like an idiot and I just wasted my time and didn't get something usable. But of course, reflecting on it, it's like ultimately I actually got a really valuable debrief out of this and I don't think I'll ever forget some of these lessons. So hopefully if this can be shared forward and it applied to people in real life, that you know, it could help someone not make those same mistakes because the reality of it is, it was so real feeling. The stress was palatable. So we had around between a thousand and eleven hundred arrivals. Only two or three had the kind of issue that that you and I experienced with the firm landing or the uh, the camping arrival. Everyone seemed very happy with it. Various levels of stress. Um, people did say yes, it was very stressful, but it, it that stress mir- uh, mirrored the real thing very successful on the controller side. The controllers loved it, especially since they couldn't run it this year for real. But yeah, EAA was very happy with it. Natka was very happy with it. We were very happy with how it performed technically. Some of the visuals are pretty stunning. Having the tri-motor show up, uh, that took till three in the morning during the middle of the show to make that happen in terms of the visual models and getting that all going. But it really just added to the show between the tour helicopter flying around, you got the tri-motor flying around, people contending with the tri-motor, hearing the tri-motor on the radio, which is one of the few planes that talks at Oshkosh. It was fantastic. So yes, Natka is interested in, in running it again, and we'll see how many times per year we can do it. It's kind of a big effort, but yeah, we're absolutely 100% going to run it again. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know it was a little bit of a mess, but I did want to share it. I thought there were some great learning moments despite the technical issues. I will do better with future sim content. Until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. It set me up for a bit of a challenge. There is a spider dangling down in front of you. What the hell? Do you see that? I did see it in my peripheral vision. I'm just going to go ahead and back up. <laughs> and uh, That's awesome. That looks like a big one from where I'm standing. Yeah, he's, uh, he's not tiny in size.